What's going on everybody? It's Conti here with another video. Atch getter in Python. Atch getter is a built-in function in Python which derives from the imported module operator. In this particular source code file of Python 3, we have the class of employee defined with each object which derives from this class featuring an ID attribute and a name. Two objects that I've created below this class definition include A, which has the ID of 1 and the name Courtney. Object B from the class employee has been given the ID 2 and the name Timothy. What if we wanted to acquire attributes from the object B using getter? Having imported the initial operator module on line 1, in the variable C, I'm going to store the ID of object B and the name for the same object also. Both attributes are separated by a comma. When I click run, as you already saw on the screen just now, as you can see, we have the attributes from object B displayed in a tuple, which is basically an unmodifiable list in Python. The only way these attributes can be modified is if I, as the programmer with the source code file, alter them in the lines of code, like so changing the ID from 2 to 3. If I run again, then the updated ID is displayed alongside the name using the print command on line 12. Notice here for the ID printoff, I have used the string function for the ID as the data type for this particular field is integer. If I take away the string function and click run, a syntax error is reported where an attribute name must be a string, hence why this particular field is facilitated within the parenthesis of this built-in function here. In my second example of getter, I've imported the function directly from the operator module, so I do not need to mention operator dot before getter again. In this particular file here, I've defined the same class as in the first example and the same two objects, which are also displayed in a list on line 9. Note how the second object is placed before the first one. What I intend to do is to rearrange this list using the getter function. Inside the parenthesis after sorted, my first parameter is the list name. After the comma, I want the getter function to refer to a particular field, which I have noted in the parenthesis here. Note also I've used speech marks around name. Finally, an optional parameter I've included at the end here is reverse equals true, which arranges the new list variable in a certain way. Once this has been created, J refers to the specific attribute names such as ID and name will be printed off before a set of colons, which will then be displayed alongside the actual data values themselves. After an attribute has been printed, a new line will be created using line 19. If I click run, you can see that the second object B is printed off first of all, and the first object 1. If I change reverse to false, this basically maintains the sorted state which was originally made by the getter when it organised the list of objects in order by name, C, T. I can also remove this particular parameter and press run again and I get the same results. My third and final example of how getter is used in Python shows how we can refer to particular classes with privatised attributes in their definitions. A double underscore is the closest you're going to get to privatising an attribute within a class so that it cannot be referred to outside of the class. In Python, complete privatization of class attributes is not possible, so each attribute can be referred to where necessary. In this case here, I've defined the same two objects as before with the same list and the getter function imported, and this time using underscores and the class name employee as I defined my class on line 1 with. I've separated this along with an underscore before the name from the attribute name with two underscores. Once these objects have been sorted, they are reversed in name order and printed just as they were in the second example. So when I click run, it prints in reverse alphabetical order by name. 
and on this occasion here I can also refer to the ID field despite the different data type it has to the name field simply by writing the field name here. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that video was useful to you. To support this channel please like and subscribe, join me soon for another video, take care.